Hey guys, today we are going to talk about 8 foil uncommons that are surprisingly expensive. And we'll start with Vandalblast. This one is from RTR. RTR was overprinted into Oblivion, therefore I'm surprised to see that there is a foil uncommon worth $8.51. The non-foil is also worth a ton. I mean, this card is very, very good. The overload is amazing, but also it costs one to destroy a artifact you don't control, which is pretty good. It's amazing, right? Like RTR for the most part, the Shocklands, Death Rite Shaman node's been banned, so that's kind of unique. Abrupt Decay, it's been reprinted into Oblivion. Jace, AOT, not much movement, although I feel like he is the, he's not bad in the modern, like he's slightly playable. So he's an interesting speculation in my opinion. But it is interesting to find that the there's two uncommons actually in RTR. The other one is Spear of Resistance, I believe. It is a white enchantment that has a ghostly prison type of effect. All right, let's move on to Sky Diamond. Um, not the most pretty card. I believe I own this one in foil. Uh, it is from 7th edition. Here is something that's very, very simple. If you have a mana rock or a artifact that produces mana, get it in foil because it's never really going to lose value. Even if they reprint it, they probably reprint the non-foil version of it in a set or the foil version will still be of the first set, especially if it has unique artwork, will still be highly, highly in demand. Okay, when I play during 7th edition, foils are not valuable. Like, I don't know how else to say it, but I looked at foils as if it was a detriment. So I knew that they were worth slightly more, but I would trade a non I would trade my foil for a non-foil and then a little bit extra, maybe 5-10% extra, mainly because we were not playing with sleeves. So yes, we were not playing with sleeves and the foils would be damaged more easily because you're I mean, you're scraping it on the kitchen table or you're scraping it on the lunchroom table or on the ground, on the gym. So the foils would take a beating much worse than, you know, a regular card. All right, Fifth Dawn, we have this card, which is in a deck, one of the more annoying decks in my opinion, but a deck nonetheless. I could not imagine... Um, this card ever being valuable, but the bobbles, all of these things that um, are cheap artifacts with slightly good abilities have stood the test of time. And this is a $29 foil, as you can tell before the deck became something that was good. It was pennies, pennies. If I were to go back in time, I would have made this decision because it I, it makes sense. Logically, it makes sense to me that this card would be where it is in terms of the foil price. And it's a cheap, inexpensive artifact with an interesting ability, and it also has a upside to it. Okay, Invasion... I didn't like Invasion that much. I have found, I think Opt is an Invasion. I have found probably 200 copies of Opt. And, no, okay, not 200. That's not right. Um, 20 copies, 20, 40 copies of Opt. Okay, 200, I'm thinking of a different card, which I recently found. So I have a lot of Mirage. And if any Mirage goes up in price, I'm the main beneficiary of that. Although I didn't spike it, I didn't buy it. There's no need for me to buy it. I already own too many copies of it. Uh, this card was a lot of fun in EDH. We played, we didn't play EDH back then. We played um, Emperor. Emperor was, in my opinion, the best format ever. I don't know why people don't play anymore. Uh, it is your, it's one Emperor aside, and then normally you have two Generals, although you could have four Generals, but normally it's two Generals. And the generals have to attack each other and, and they have to kill each other before they can attack the emperor. And the emperor is just building and the emperor could not play combo. Otherwise, you know, they cannot play combo. And we had a rule where they can't just combo off 
um, because then it would be too easy because they're just sitting there doing nothing and then uh, accelerating pretty much into a combo. All right, War Tax. Uh, this one is okay. I remember this card quite well. So any card which is not even a pirate, as long as it has pictures pictures of pirates on it, and it is foil from Mercadian Mask. Mercadian Mask, um, I don't remember too many other pirate sets. Mercadian Mask had a pirate theme. And what was the other one? I think the other one was Starter or something. Starter 2000. It's just some random... I remember all the pirates had guns and all the Night Stalkers had guns. And this was like aimed towards little kids. Which they would never do now, but still. It was kind of funny because there was like starter set and everyone had guns in the set. And then and in, in non-starter sets, they, no one had guns. No one had guns for a long time. Um, so these pirates did not have guns, they had swords. I call them the Mercating Mask Sword Pirates. The Pirates with Guns is some starter set. But any picture of a pirate, people are now really into it. Arcane Laboratory. I love 7th edition. And it's one of my favorite sets of all time. Uh, one of the reasons it was uh, a favorite set of mine was the core sets have always been very good. When you're younger and the core set is... I think it's not big starter. It's like beginner it's like advanced no advanced is the one intermediate or something it's the one in the middle and as a younger person you don't you don't want to play starter because that's offensive no one ever wants to be a starter right you want to begin oh expert so there's expert i think advanced and beginner beginner is not right i don't know what's called starter or something so advanced was like the um, booster packs that were not core sets and then uh, expert was the corset ones and I love corsets I'm so glad they're coming back because I don't know what it is about corsets just the fact that even new corsets have a lot of reprints and they're like classic reprints and it feels like I'm playing magic from the Odin days like now that we have pirates and dinosaurs and vehicles dinosaurs driving trains into pirates and boats into J Swift you know whatever he is right now, Pirate Vraska. I mean, this is like all cool and well, but there's something about core sets that really appeals to me. All right, Bobble has tanked. It has tanked from $45 to $18, and the foil has tanked as well. So the foil has been okay price-wise, but, you know, it is not great because in Iconic Masters, guess what's going to happen? You get a foil pack, therefore it's going to be a lot easier to get your foil playset than before. Bobble is a, such a good card in Death Shadow. It's such a good card in every... I think they're going to ban it. So I own copies of this card. Yes, I own it because I play during Code Snap and I just have this. You could... Like, all this stuff, like I'm going to make a video later, sometime later, I don't know when, but I'll talk about flea markets and why I feel like some YouTubers are like not really. Because I've been to flea markets. I live in Houston. I live in Texas. And there's flea markets all over the place. And they typically tend to be Spanish. i have learning Spanish through flea market, which is better than hiring someone to tutor me Spanish because then I get to use it when I'm negotiating and ordering food and stuff, right? So I can order pretty much any food in Spanish now. And that was because I go to these Spanish flea markets and the food is so good. Like, I don't know. I didn't like Mexican food before. Um, I didn't like Mexican food before, like when I was living in New York City. I wasn't a fan of Mexican food ever. When I was living in Pennsylvania, I was not a fan. When I was living in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, I, there, I was definitely not a fan. But I realized what happened is when you move up north, those restaurants suck for Mexican food, right? Like, but then you live in Texas, like you're right across, you know, you can see kind of Mexico is very close to you and the people cooking the food are actually from Mexico. So the food tastes like way better. It's fresher. Um, what is I'm talking about right now? Oh, flea markets. Okay, back to flea markets. I've been to enough of them to know that if you were to find like a Zendikar Fetchland in a flea market, it just can't happen. Because Zendikar Fetchlands have been valuable forever. There's no case scenario where a person has 20 Zendikar Fetchlands and they sell it to you for $20. 
that person knows that even at the worst case scenario, one Zendikar fetch lands at least 10, 15, right? And they're going to check the price on it because they play magic. So if you play magic recently, you had the internet and you knew what the prices was for all of your cards. Zendikar above everyone at smartphone by then and sharking was non-existent. So there's no way you sell your collection and then you forgot mistakenly forgotten this you know 20 pile of zenicar fetch land or shock lands hey, shock lands even more insane right are shock lands shock lands it's like dude the guy you you know he it doesn't make any sense but the way that you can make money from flea markets is with the pirate cards right like war tax there's no way anyone anyone knew that war tax would be worth any money there's no way anyone knew mrs bobble would be worth any money when it came out it just was never worth money for the longest period of time. And someone can look at it and say, yep, not worth money. Um, so you can find bobbles, you can find war tax, you can find these pirates that are spiking up in price. But I doubt that honestly you can find fetch lands for bulk. I doubt honestly you can find, you know, a um, shock land from RTR in bulk. Everyone knew that these cards were valuable they were valuable at all times. So I'm going to make a longer video, a rant about it, because I feel like, I feel like, yeah, I can make those fake videos, right? But like, why would I want to? Like, I can make fake videos pretending I found stuff at flea markets, but they would be different stuff, right? Oh, look at this. I found 25 Zen car fetch lands at the flea market. Oh my gosh. What the blank? <laughs> That's not how flea markets work. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.